You might have tried modeling textile composites and you found it really, really hard. I want to tell you that's all right. It's very challenging to model textile or woven composite. And this is why I want to point out to you the reasons why textile composites are very hard to model. And please do hang on to the end where I point out tips to help you to model textile composite easily and effectively. Let's sit back and relax as we get started with this modeling. Of course, the question that you may want to ask is why do I think I'm the right person to talk about these challenges of modeling textile composite? And the reason why I think I should be talking about this because I've got lots of years of modeling textile composites, especially considering that I did my PhD in composite mechanics and then I did a postdoctoral work on textile composites back in the days. And since then, I've also had students who have worked on textile composites. So I, I kind of know a thing or two when it comes to modeling of textile composites. And over the years, the things that I've learned, I want to see if I can just crystallize that into a set of ideas to help us as we explore this idea of why it is very challenging and very hard to model woven or textile composites. So now to the main question of why is it very hard to model textile or woven composite. And the first point is what I call the architectural complexity of woven or textile composite. Especially when you compare it with things like the unidirectional or the bidirectional, multidirectional composite. In fact, laminated composites have just those laminates in them. But when you come to dealing with textile or woven composite, there are a lot you have to deal with, beginning with the binder, the weft, and the warp element and there are different orientations in space. So that topology, the idea of a topology of a textile composite is really, really complicated. And a lot of times when people want to start modeling textile composites, especially from a background in the area of laminated composites, that can be very challenging for them. So that's number one reason why it is very difficult to model textile composites. The second reason is material complexity. It's not enough for the architecture to be complex. The materials that make up a textile composite can be quite complicated you know for example think about a typical 3d reinforced composite it will have a binder a warp and a warp yarn and all of them will have different compositions in them for example there will be matrix pockets there will be the binder and within the binder you've got fibers within a yarn and those fibers have matrix incorporated within them and all that make it quite difficult when you're looking at the complexity of the material so that's another reason why these materials are quite difficult to model so for someone trying to build up a model based on this woven composite you need to deal with these material complexities in which case you need to think about all the damage evolution laws all the elastic properties the plasticity properties the interface effect all that complication had to be integrated as well as the architectural complexity in order for you to have a good model if this is the kind of content that you like please do subscribe to this channel if you have not already done so so that when content like this are made you'll be the first to see it the third reason why woven composite can be difficult to model is material and isotropy in fact with the other type of composites the material orientation it's important but not critically important in this instance when you're dealing with textile composite the orientation of the material is absolutely important for you to deal with because for example you've got a yarn that could be in a zero degree direction you've got a warp that could be in a 90 degree direction i've got a binder that runs through the depth of the material in a different direction and the contortions in orientations of the binder need to be captured in the model so for example, you then need to define clearly the material orientations when you specify your material library for this system. So the anastropy of the material system in textile composite brings back also another layer of difficulty when you're trying to model textile composite. In fact, I made a video which you can see here that tells you about how to assign material orientation to a 3D reinforced textile composite. And that will give you an idea into why this is really a thing of concern if you're trying to model this type of material. The fourth reason why textile composite can be difficult to model is what I describe as a multiplicity of volume fractions. You find out that the volume fractions associated with textile composite can be quite diverse. With a typical laminated composite, you will probably have just a fiber volume fraction and the metric volume fraction. In some instances, you may be having the volume fraction of the interface. But when you come to the concept of a woven or a textile composite, you have multitudes of volume fractions associated with the system. For example, there is the idea of the main volume fraction within the yarn. So remember the yarn is made up of fibers dispersed within a matrix. So you need to know what the yarn volume fraction would be. 
You also need to know what the intra-yarn volume fraction. You need to also know about the overall yarn volume fraction for the system, the metrics volume fraction, as well as the overall volume fraction of the system. So you've got these different type of volume fractions that are all important when you're dealing with woven composites. And so for someone trying to create a woven composite, you need to be careful in your calculations and find the relationship between all these connected volume fractions. It's not a simple case of how many fibers in the system. No, there are other things to consider. This is the reason why it's challenging to model textile composites. The final reason why it's also difficult to model textile composite is the meshing challenge. In fact, this is something that a lot of time people struggle with. And if you've ever worked around textile composite, you find that the meshing is a challenge. In fact, there are other ideas around voxel meshing where people use voxel methods to mesh because of this main issue of modeling, of meshing of textile composites. The real reason because of the complexity of the architecture. So traditional meshing algorithms or implementations within final element codes can be difficult in discretizing that. This is mainly because a lot of times when you're modeling textile composites, it's essential that you use some kind of a brick or a solid element to model it. Because with a brick or a solid element, then you have a better prediction of the properties of the system. But then if you then try to discretize or mesh a system with a brick element, it is really, really difficult. In fact, most of the time it will tell you, no, it cannot do it. So the alternative is to then use a tetrahedral element but then it's well known in the community that tetrahedral elements have a higher percentage error associated to them, with them. And so it's not really encouraged to use triangular elements. So you find out that what can mesh your domain, which are the triangular, the tetrahedral elements, are not suitable for meshing of woven composites. And so we are then left with this issue of having to deal with these ideas of how to model them. So that's another reason why it can be very challenging to model this. A lot of time we, spend time building an excellent model of our textile composite but when it comes to meshing it we find that we can't do that so we end up having a degenerate version of the ori original beautiful model within our mesh system so i won't want to end this video by only talking about the difficulties i do want to give you ideas or tips of how to make your modeling of textile composite a little bit easy and the first thing is in terms of the complexity of the architecture you really need to plan ahead what the model would look like so you need to get a piece of paper and sketch the yarn orientation. Think about the entire yarn spacing. Think about how that will fit in overall, how that meets with the expected volume fraction on the system. Plan it out carefully on a piece of paper, even before you start setting it up within a finite element or a CAD model. So that's number one tip that you need to bear in mind when modeling textile composites. The second tip that I think you need to, that I found useful for me when I model textile composites is it, it makes sense to have a reference that you're building from. So I would typically not start with the metrics. I will always start with the binder arrangement. So I'll sketch the binder, orient it in space exactly how it needs to be. And then from that binder, I'll take my offsets to create the warp and then create the weft if that's what you're working with. If you don't have a binder system, then start with maybe the warp arrangement, sketch it exactly as it should be, then create the model and then take that as an offset as you build the system. So this is the second tip that you need to be aware of. So the third tip that I also have found really helpful when it comes to modeling or textile composite is, if you find out that when you create the binder, the weft and the warp arrangement, and, you tr and then you immerse it with the metrics, you find out that it can be very difficult for the whole assembly to work. Um, because sometimes there may be connectivities between them and you find that the merging of the model can be difficult. So one of the tricks that I've used in the past that I want to see, I want to tell you is create a much bigger size metrics for your system. Let it be a huge size matrix that kind of buffs the whole binder and weft and warp system together and assemble and mesh that. When you mesh the whole assembly, it will seem like, oh, you have too much metrics in the system. That's okay. Then once you've created the model, then the next step is to then trim off the metrics, the extra layers of the metrics so that you have an, a, a, a good structure for your system. So that's the other thing that I would do as a tip. Then with the challenge of meshing, the fourth tip that I would like to you know, leave with you is the idea that you have to please make sure that you partition the domain. Yes, it will be good for the mesh to just run in one go but it doesn't always work. So take time to chop up the model into as many pieces as possible. That will make it easier for your machine to run. If you run the first time and it says there's a certain section in the domain that is not working, 
go there and partition those systems again and then run the mesh again until you eventually get an excellent mesh for your model this is one of the way except you use an excellently you know very good meshing algorithm for your system but when you use traditional finite element codes you do need to partition extensively to get a good model then the fifth tip that i want to give to you is the idea that your rv size doesn't have to be as big as reality in fact, the concept of representative volume element is the word representative. You need to find the smallest size of the model that you're modeling that will give you a good result. So in most cases, it may be just having some binder, some warped, and then maybe some warp system, maybe without a lot of reputation. So you start with the smallest unit first, and then if that doesn't work, then you move on to a bigger unit. But starting with the smallest RVA size, would save you a lot of computational cost, a lot of machine challenges, and it will make your life very easy. So the smallest RV size is essential. And then the final tip that I want to give to you also is please remember to assign your material orientation when you're modeling this kind of composite. The orientation of the material is important. And like I said, the video here will help you to do in this. If this is the kind of content that you like, please do subscribe to this channel. So when contests like this are made, you'll be the first to see it. Thank you for your interest in this channel. And please do watch this video that tells you how to model a textile composite system. Thank you.